I would like to say good morning to the church. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Are y'all glad this morning? We want to, everybody voices, and trying to sing this song, we want everybody voices. Uh, let it be real, let it be real, said let
alive in the heaven above. Father, we come this morning just to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for another chance to come out to the house to worship one more time, Father. Just to lift up the name of your darling son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, thank you for writing over us last night and all night long that we tossed and turned on off. We could have been out there bed. Yeah. But Father, you touched us this morning with divine thing of love and grace and allowed us to see one more day. Yes. And Father, we don't take it lightly. We want to say thank you, dear Lord. Amen. Thank you, Father, for the health and strength that they can get up. Still close to my right mind, Father. Yeah. And had worship on my heart and on my mind. Yeah. And Father God, I just have to say thank you. Thank you. And then, Lord, you gave us a family grace this morning. Right. To come up and down the danger highways, Father. Mm -hmm. And come to the house of worship one more time. Yeah. And Father, we pray after you give us a heart to worship this morning. To worship you in spirit and in truth. Right. And then, Lord, we pray that your spirit would move on this place today. Oh, yeah. From the front door all the way to the back door, dear Lord. From the poor bit to the back door. Yeah. Father, touch every heart, Father, every family represented here today. Dear Lord God, we thank you for watching those of us as we go up and down life highway. Yes, Father, we pray that you look in on the sick and the shut in, dear Lord. Yes, so all that some on the bed of fish, dear Lord, don't know how they're going to make it. We pray that you, Father, you just look in on them, dear Lord God. Yes, Lord. And the Father, our son, that morning, the lost of a loved one, we pray that you will comfort them, Father, as yes, only you yes, can. Lord. Father, we just thank you for being who you are. Lord. We praise for being God, and God all by yourself. Yes, Besides, we thought there had nobody else we had to call on. Mm -hmm. And Father, thank you, dear Lord, for your son, Jesus Christ, who paid a debt that he did not owe. Yeah. A debt that we could not pay. All right. Dear Lord, we thank you for what we praise you this morning, dear Lord. Amen. Dear Lord, we pray that you bless this church, dear Lord God. Yes, yes, bless the whole congregation, Father. Bless the deacon ministry and all the ministry in this church, dear Lord God. Right. That you bless the pastor of his family, dear Lord. Yes, right. Father, help us to go in the way you would have us to go. Yeah. Give us a heart, Father, to be. Be like the servant David. Let us help us to be men and women after the very heart of God. Yeah. Dear Lord God, we just want to do your will. We just want to worship and praise you, Father. Yeah. Dear Lord God, let it be done in our lives, in our homes, on our jobs, Father, in our schools. Yeah. All according to your will for your glory. Yeah. That your name may be exalted and lifted up because you're so worthy. Yeah. We thank you, dear Lord God. We thank you, Jesus. We love you, Father. Yeah. Dear Lord God, we pray and ask these no other prayers. Pray and ask them all in the name of your daughter and son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In name we do pray. Amen. 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 There's a lily, it's in the valley, shining bright as the morning star. Yeah. 
We begin this week back to work. And so again, I just pray that as we have rested over the past couple of weeks, I pray that we're ready uh, to begin to get back to work. Our deacons have met this morning at 8.30 a.m. and will continue once a month until their training is completed. And I know that we are starting from the head going down. And so as we are ready to move forward, I hope that you all are ready to move forward. Amen. And that way we can all be who God would have us to be. Amen. I want you to keep in mind what God is getting ready to do over the next couple of days and couple of weeks. Amen. Please, if you have not marked this down, it should be on your emails if you have not. But on January 22nd, tomorrow night, we'll begin our church school. It will be at 7 o'clock p.m. And then on Tuesday, we will have our deacons meeting. That will be at 7 o'clock p.m. And then on the 25th of this month, we will have Bible study. Again, that will be at 7 o'clock p.m. You need to come and share with us by way of Bible study, biblical understanding of the truth of God's word as we will investigate for the next several weeks Christian stewardship. Amen. I want to teach again on Christian stewardship and then on the 27th at 10 o'clock a.m. those who have been connect, uh, called already, I pray that you would. There's some more that I still got to get to. On the 27th at 10 o'clock a.m. we will have our leadership meeting. That is for all of our leaders of our ministries. You will get the call or the text message to be in place at 10 o'clock a.m. on the 27th. And then on the 27th at 12 o'clock p.m., I pray uh, that you will join us, those of you remaining that want to be a part of what we have going on. Our church business meeting will be on the 27th at 12 o'clock p.m. Then on next Sunday morning at, 11, at 10 o'clock p.m., uh, we're going to have our leadership, amen, recommitment, leadership installation, leadership a rededication, Reverend Carlton May will be in our midst and he will share with us uh, that particular morning. And so I pray uh, that you will come and share with us next Sunday morning at 10 o'clock a.m. All of our leaders I will be in, will be in black and that is to inclusive of all of our deacons and those persons who are in leadership position. Amen. As we will seek to do our, again, installation, rededication, recommitment service on 10 o'clock next, next week. Amen. Now, for the, all of our deaconess, I want you to hear this announcement. Then your training uh, will begin on February 18th. That's the third Sunday in next month, February the 18th, next month at 8.30 a.m. as well. And so, again, I pray that you would, again, uh, be with us and pray with us and pray for us. Because I just believe the more we know, the better off we are. Amen. Somebody say amen. 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 And so, all of our deaconess. We will be in training, you will be in training at 8.30 a.m. on the third Sunday morning of February. And then we'll begin to go. I give you your dates as such. Amen. As needed as we continue to do what God has asked of our hands, our heart, and our feet to do. Mount Calvary Association Women's Outreach, I said last week, let me say again this week, amen, their outreach to Damascus Way Valley Rescue Mission and the Women's and Children's Shelter or Center, uh, they've given us a list of ideas, a list of things that we are asked to donate. If you have not already begun to donate, please give those items again uh, to our missions department. You can see some supports to the Lockhart uh, for those in, uh, items such as raisins, diapers, again, uh, cleaning supplies, all the way to uh, sheets and bowel brushes and even underwear. Amen. I would today, ladies and gentlemen, just check your email for the exhaustive list of what those things are that they're requesting that we are in need of. Amen. Don't forget to fill out your membership form. If you have not, please fill out your membership form, your membership card, so that we can place you in the file for 2024 as an active member of this church. Again, I said every Sunday it's important because, again, in order to take care and conduct business, amen, you need to be an active member within the Friendship Church of Hamilton, Georgia. Amen. So if you have not, please see the ushers on your way out. Please see those persons who have those cards available. So again, you can fill those out, get those turned in so we can update the role with your name on it. If you are in need of your giving statement, amen, those are available as well. You can see Sister Port, Sister Smith, or Sister Harris, that's Deborah Smith, amen, and they will be able to give you uh, the, what you need by way of your giving statement, amen. So please, ma'am, please, sir, hear these announcements as we are ready uh, to press forward in 2024. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 says, we walk by faith, we walk not by faith, 
Well, I mean, we walk by faith and what? Not by sight. Amen. So please, ma'am, please, sir, let us again govern that accordingly on the 13th of February. For those of you who will, come pray with us. Amen. At the Mount Island Church in Phoenix City, Highway 165. It'll be a three-night revival. I'll do one night, which is the 13th. I believe that Tuesday night. If you would, come share with us. And at least, if not in person, pray with us. Amen. And God will give us the strength that we need to carry on in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. To God be the glory again for the great things he has done, is doing, and by faith, I believe all of that God shall do. Amen. Again, we did not have any visitors to stand with us today, but to those of you who bear the cold weather, the inclemency of the coldness, amen, to come mostly at 8.30 and then again at 10 o'clock. Will you give yourselves a hand of celebration today? Thank God for you for being present. Amen. This, this morning. Amen. And so I pray today that you would again come to worship because again the Bible says they that worship me must worship me in both spirit and in the truth amen and so again I pray that God will bless you not only you but bless your family not only your family but I pray that God will bless that in which you are encompassing about amen so again to God be all of the glory. We're transitioning now to our moment of gift giving. It's giving time in the sanctuary. A good time to give. For God loves a what? Come on, say it like you mean it. God loves a what? Cheerful giving. I just believe the more you give, the more God will indeed give unto you. For you can't be God's giving. That's no matter how you try. Come on, deacons. Deacons are coming now to receive our offering today, our gifts. Amen. As we are going to be, make ready to be a blessing unto our God. Amen. And those of you who are asking the question, where's our monitors? Our computer is broken, it's gone, and so we're in the process of getting an updated computer so we can have one in the sound booth as well as fixing our, uh, our, our uh, speakers in the back. Amen. So that we can begin to have the right sound inside the church. So perhaps this week we can get that done and that way we can move forward in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. How many of y'all are excited to give? Let me see your hands. I didn't see that many hands. How many of y'all are excited to give? Don't, don't you know if God withholds his breath from you? If God takes away his blessings from you? How many of y'all know we'll die where we stand? But I want to suggest to you, I want to encourage you today to be a blessing to God because God has again so richly been a blessing to you. There are three ways you can give. First, you can give again by way of the baskets up front. Our outside baskets are for our general time and public offering. Our black basket is for again our building fund, capital campaign 2025. Our silver tray is for our benevolent offering. If you're not giving by way of basket, you can give electronically. You can search the words, uh, download the app of uh, Givelify and search the word Friendship Hamilton. And you can be a blessing to God as God has so richly uh, been a blessing to you. Or you can just simply send it the old-fashioned way to your box, 546 Hamilton, Georgia, 31811. So again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the opportunity to be a blessing to God as God has so goodly, richly, and kindly been a blessing to us. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you now for the time that's designed to share. We thank you for the moment of gift giving. God, we thank you for the opportunity to be a blessing to you as you have so richly been a blessing to us. Now, God, as we're giving out of the depths of our heart, let none his suffer because of that giving. But I pray that you return, restore, and replenish unto them that which they rendered unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And every heart that believes said, Amen. Wherever you are, if you come now, bring your gifts to our God. Somebody ought to say hallelujah. 
somebody ought to say thank you, Jesus. Now, anything dead needs to be buried. But I've got to ask the question because I don't know if it's me or you, but it's too cold in here. Let me try it like this. Has God done anything for anybody in this place? Let me ask it this way. Has God done for you those things you could not do for yourself? Let, let me ask this question. Maybe this will walk down your street. Did God take care of your household last night? Did God watch over your children all week long? Did God take care of your grandchildren and your nieces and your nephews? Did, did God, matter of fact, put food on your table? Did God put clothes on your back? I wish I had somebody in here today that said, Dad, I come to seek Jesus because he's worthy to be praised. If you don't praise him, some rocks on the outside will trade places with you. But if you know the God that I'm talking about, the God that I'm speaking about, and you know how good God has been to you, then guess what? Nobody ought to push you, pump you, or prime you. But when you just run your mind back, can I get you to just run your mind back real quickly and see how God has been good to you? How God has blessed you even when you weren't even worthy of being blessed. How God has granted you his grace and mercy even when you were no good in and of yourself. Listen, it's prayer time. Good time to pray. Good time to talk to God. Good time to tell God all about our troubles. Good time to laugh, cast our burdens, our issues at the feet of Jesus knowing that if I learn to give it to him, he then will make it all right. Anybody here know what prayer can do? Y'all do know prayer can make ways out of no ways. Prayer can turn midnights into midday. Prayer, prayer can strengthen you when you're weak, build you when you're torn down. Let me tell you, if you pray and pray right, God will both hear and answer your prayer. Wherever you are, the altars are extended. Come on, let's have family prayer. Come on, wherever you are, I want you to come. Let's just have family prayer. See if we can go to God in prayer. Tell God all about what our troubles are. It's not that he don't already know, but I just want to tell the Lord so that he knows that I know that when I am in trouble, I got somebody I can go to. Anybody glad you got somebody you can go to? Yes, sir. Come on, just say it, say Jesus. Come on, come on, say it, say it, say it, say it. It's a 
God bless in a special way that only you can bless because God, when you bless it, yeah. we'll be so very careful to forever give your name praise. We'll be careful, God, to forever give your name honor. Yeah. And we'll be careful to ever give your name glory. It is in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. And every heart that agrees said, Amen. Amen, Amen again. Amen. Amen.
Somebody ought to say hallelujah. Somebody ought to say thank you, Jesus. How many of y'all love the Lord? How many of y'all really, really love the Lord? I love the Lord not because of what I can do, but I love him simply because of what God is able to do. Amen? And the love of God that's on the inside of me ought to spread to the entire world. Is that all right? Hey, we're going to get ready to move real quickly. We're going to move around the sanctuary. I want you to grab you about three uh, thank yous, about uh, three uh, hellos, about three I love yous, or whatever it is uh, that it is that you need to grab. I want you to grab that real quickly. Let somebody know you thank God for them for being with us, amen, in the house of God one more time. Is that all right? Amen. To God be the glory for what things he has done, he is doing in my faith. What he's going to do. Come on, let's move around the sanctuary real quick. Come on, find you somebody. Everybody move. Everybody, everybody move. Everybody, everybody move. Move, move, move. Well, I feel like it today.
of these installments and the moments of these series, what he's trying to do is hammer the nail in it to say it's not about the works that we're able to do. It's not about the deeds that we're able to produce. But here it is, what Paul suggests to us is that if God is going to sue for us what we can't do for ourselves, then watch this, we got to exercise our faith. And I wonder today, can I drop my kickstand there? Ask the question, is there anybody in the building who got faith? Is there anybody in the building today who understands without a shadow of a doubt? I got faith, watch this, and not in what God does, but how many of y'all got faith in who God is? And that's why I got to clap my hands. That's why I got to say amen. That's why I got to give God glory. Why? Because I know I'm not where I am for long. How many of y'all know God is going to take us from where we are to where God is getting ready to have us? That's why Paul says, he said, watch this. He says, in the midst and the absence of Jesus Christ. He says, listen, you don't have to be concerned, be concerned. He says, you don't have to even be worried about what you have going on. He said, why? Because your connection to Jesus Christ is simply based upon the faith that you have in who he is. That's all I wanted to suggest to you today. That yeah, my faith is not in the building. Because you better believe the other day, I was getting ready to get out of work and a building burned down. My, my faith can't be in a pew because watch this, you better believe pews will change. Are y'all in here with me? Here it is. My, my faith can't even be in a person because you better believe some people you know and love the most, they gonna die out in your life. But can I just serve in the crowd that they'll tell you that if you got faith, you better have faith in the one that does all things well. Can I get you to help me call his name? His name is Jesus. Is there anybody know who he is? Is there anybody to thank God he's a living of the valley. He's the bright and morning star. He's a wheel in the middle of a wheel. He's my shelter from the storm and the blast. Can I tell you who he is? His name is Jesus. So Paul says, he says, listen, in the year 2024, day, as you investigate these series of sermons, as you position friendship to be the best church this side of God's glory, he reminds me that there are a couple of things that we got to learn to do if we are going to be made better. Number one, you must understand, if we're going to understand who God is and what God is getting ready to do, then first of all, watch this, we got to learn to be spiritual in Christ. Saying that with the spiritual in Christ. Here, here it is. The word spirit comes from the root word, uh, the word spiritual rather, comes from the root word spirit. Here, here it is. You got to understand. I said spiritual in who? Christ. Why? Because you better believe there are all types of spirits that run rapidly throughout this world. Uh, but but I, can I tell you today that when I'm spiritual in Christ, can I tell you there ain't but one true and living spirit. Watch this. He is the third person of the Holy Trinity. I ought to have somebody in here that know he walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me I am his own. Here it is. If I'm going to move forward by faith, I got to first of all be spiritual in Christ. Shout that with me, spiritual in Christ. I got to be right because here it is again. We're digging the text. First, second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Look what he said. He says, we walk. I believe last week I talked about the unity or the uniformity of the walk. Watch this. He said, we walk. Here it is. Hey, we must understand that we possess a way of life that is not understood by everybody. Yes, sir. Can I say that again? Here it is. If you're going to be spiritual in Christ, then watch this. He said, you, you possess a way of life that everybody don't understand. Can I suggest to you that everybody don't understand why you take two days or you take one day out of your two-day weekend and you wake up, you get dressed, you get in your car and you move forward, you come into the house of worship when you can spend that day all in your bed. Watch this, baby. They don't know what God has done for you. Let me talk to this side. Is there anybody here know when I'm spiritual in Christ here it is? I ain't got the answer to what they don't know. I got the answer to what God already knows. I'm spiritual. Watch this. I'm spiritual. I'm spiritual in who? In Christ. There, there are all types of what? Spirits. There are evil spirits. There are satanic spirits. But here it is. I'm grateful there's only but one spiritual spirit. Here it is. Watch this. My walk is different because of who I am. Well, who are you? Man? I am a child of the king. Are y'all in here with me? Is there anybody glad you're a child of the king? 
some, somebody ought to tell the Lord, thank you. I don't care because the church ain't full today, but here it is. I got to say, Lord, thank you because I'm a child of the king. You know me even when I don't know myself. Are y'all listening to me in here? Here, here it is. What I possess is not understood by everybody else. That, that's why the writer says, Paul in his pen department, he says, we walk. Are y'all in here with me? The we in the text, I think I told you the first Sunday, is not everybody. Because watch this, everybody ain't gonna walk with you. I wish I had just two of y'all in here to make me feel like it. Y'all understand, sir? Some things you gotta learn to do all by yourself. But here it is, if I got somebody who's in alignment with me as we are in alignment with God's word, can I tell you today, there's no mountain we can't get over. There's no tunnel we can't go through. How do you know that? Because my still, if I'm going to be spiritual in Christ, it says I can learn to move forward by what faith. My end goal got to be different. This ain't my home. This ain't your home. Yes, Let me tell y'all today, we all have children, we all the pilgrims. Moving through this barren land. One of these old days, we got to hear what God has to say. Are y'all in here with me? I, I wish my granddaddy was here this morning because he reminds me as he sneaks over me this morning to tell me every tub got to sit on his own body. Are y'all in here with me? And, and because of that, watch this, every deed done in this body, we got to give an account for. And that's why I want to suggest to you, since I'm not like everybody else, I ought to be like who I'm like. Are y'all in here with me? Well, who are you like? I ought to be spiritual in Jesus Christ. Anybody going to speak spiritual in Jesus Christ? Anybody thank God that you're spiritual because of who you are? He says what we walk, in other words, he says we are not understood. We are peculiar individuals. We've been bought, uh, we've been brought out of darkness into the marvelous light. Are y'all in here with me? Here it is, I'm grateful because what I possess is basically who I am. Amen. Are y'all in here with me? What, what do you mean, Pastor Dave? I think what, what's not in me can't come out of me. Right. Let me see if I can talk to this side over here. You got to have something on the inside of you in order for it to come on the outside of you. Anybody ever went to the bank and withdrew money and you didn't have a dime in there? They're called the insufficient funds. Are y'all in here with me? I can't go to God and withdraw from God what I had put into God. He said that everything that God brought. Y'all gonna help me praise his name? Y'all gonna help me lift him up? Y'all gonna help me glorify him? Y'all in here with me today? Don't, don't you wait till tomorrow. Tomorrow ain't promise. Don't, don't you wait till next week. Cause next week might not be mine. But the scripture said the day you hear my voice. Do I have any help in here? I just need two of y'all in here. It said what heart not your heart. Watch this. We possess a way of life. That's not understood by what everyone. But then watch the second that the believer is now living a life that does not exist yet. Amen. And y'all look here with me when I studied that, I shouted to myself, wait a minute. You saying I'm living a life that don't even exist yet? Then what life am I living? I'm living a life as if I'm already in glory. <laughs> I want y'all to help me in here. See, some of y'all didn't understand that, but can I walk down your street? See, the old church didn't understand anything about eschatology or anything about hermeneutics or hermeneutics or homiletics, but what the old church would understand is this. Watch this. I'm living a life as if it already exists. Why? Because they'll say, this is the dressing up room. I wish I had some folk from the old church in here. If I'm going to go to heaven, I got to go to heaven. How? From what? Right down here. If there ain't anybody glad you're living a life. Yeah. I'm living a life that is what pleasing to the Almighty God. I tell y'all, it ain't about what they say. Right. It's about what he says. Are y'all in here with me? Quit crying about what they say. But you better learn to lean on what he says. Because how many of y'all know God be for you? Come on, y'all help me preach in here. I said if God be for you, the world against you can't do your work. No harm. The believer is living a life that does not yet exist. What Paul says to the church and Corinth by saying we walk, he says, we walk as if we're already in the kingdom of God. Can I suggest to you today, this is our preparation. Paul says this is 
I'm dressed up wrong. I'm not dressing up wrong. Here it is. I'm not saying, beloved brother, sister, walk as if you're puffed up and prideful and think that you're all that and a bag of chips. But I'm telling you to walk like you know where you're going. Are y'all in here with me? And, and I'm grateful today because I know where I'm going. Do I have any help in here? One of these old days, can I tell you what I'm going to do? I'm going to sit at the feet of Jesus. I ain't got to tell him how I've been lying on me, shoes and abuse. But can I tell you what I'm going to say to him? Lord, thank you, sir. Thank you. Like, like anybody here got to thank you on your heart. I thank you on your mind. I thank you on your spirit. Matter of fact, if there anybody got anything to say thank you for, can I run the road? He let you lay down last night. He let you toss and turn all night long. Amen. This morning, he woke you up. Is there anybody glad I got something? Y'all better say something to me. Because here it is, look on your day. You could have been dead, buried, sleeping in your grave. But I want somebody that got a worship experience like me to say he looked beyond my faults. Y'all in here with me? I want somebody here that got a praise on your heart that say he looked beyond my faults. Y'all still ain't caught on yet. I want somebody here to understand it's not where I've been, it's where I'm headed. He's done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. I got to go. Here it is. Here it is. He says, watch what he says. He says, verse 7. He says, you got to be number one, what's spiritual in who? In Christ. But here, watch this, number two. He says, not only must you be spiritual in Christ, Henry. He says, watch this, number two, you got to be separated in your call. Yes, sir. Are y'all in here with me? Because there's going to be those, watch this, that try to tell you this is too hard. Amen. There's going to be those that are going to try to tell you that it don't take all of that. There's going to be those that tell you stuff like we've never done it that way before. Yes, sir. And, and watch this, why they are right. Here it is, I learned this morning, why it may be custom, don't make it biblical. Right. I was a happy witness in here. He teaches y'all about to say something. Why it may be customary, don't make it biblical. Why? Because the text says, in watch this verse 7, we walk out by what faith. Do y'all see that in the text? Right. Here it is, it says, you be separated in your calling. Why? Because my A says, here it is, faith must become. Not part of, but faith will become who I am. Yes, Are y'all living here with me? When they see you, they ought to see you as a faith walker. Yes, when they see you, they ought to see you as a faith talker. When they see you, you ought to see you as a faith giver. Are y'all living here with me? Because here it is, what I don't understand, my faith says I still got to believe. Are y'all living here with me? I don't understand how Mary was conceived of the fourth of the Holy Spirit. Here it is. But I believe that Jesus came. Yeah. I thought everybody was going to say something right over there. Here it is. I don't understand how Jesus Christ died like everybody else died. But I got to believe early Sunday morning. Do I have any help in here? Now, I ain't the Baptist church in it. Early Sunday morning. How many of y'all believe he got up with all power in the palm of his yeah. hand? Yeah. Here it is. Got to be spiritual from Christ, but I got to be separated in my call. Yeah. Because faith must become, watch this, not a part of who I am, mm -hmm. but faith must be a part of must be my daily life. Right. In other words, watch this, what Paul says is that faith speaks to the salvation that has been gifted to us. Mm -hmm. Here it is, everybody is not saved. Yes. I got to say it again, I hate to bust your bubble, but everybody is not saved. Yes. And here it is, everybody will not be saved. Are y'all in here with me? There are going to be some bodies that end up in death, hell, and the grave. Are y'all in here with me? But faith says to those of us who are believers in Christ, salvation speaks to what God has given to me. Yes, sir. And all I want to tell you is that you ought to be thankful yeah. about God saving your life. Yes, sir. You ought to be grateful about God doing what needed to be done. See, I'd rather err on the fact that there is a God yes, sir. and die and go to heaven to the error on the fact, watch this, that there ain't no God and there turns out to be a God and I die and go to hell. Y'all right. better tell your folks long enough. Yeah. Here it is. I ain't going to err on the fact that I'm doing this stuff.
enough in vain. But here it is. The faith I have in the grace of my salvation says that I walk by faith. Are y'all in here with me? I got to walk by what? Some things I can't do, but my faith, it'll, it'll make it work. Some, some things I don't know, but my faith, it, it'll make it happen. Are y'all in here with me? When I walk by faith, it now becomes who I am. Again, Paul reminds us that there'll be, one day will come, well, watch this, we will no longer be absent from God. But what Paul reminds us is that one day we are going to be present with God. Are y'all in here with me? And here it is. Because of the presence I have with God, what Paul said, my faith suggests that we must understand that what we cannot handle, God got it in control. I wish I had somebody here that got sick in your body. You couldn't handle it, but you went to the doctor and they couldn't do nothing with it. But how many of y'all know God had it in control? I wish I had some people in here that had way much family members that you can handle it, but here it is. When you put it in the hands of God, how many of y'all know God worked it out? Can I just get 15 of y'all in here that are clap them hands and say, amen, that are testify here and in. What I cannot do, God is able. You do, you do know he's able, right? But he's only working from those that are separated. Here it is. You can't be with the inner crowd. So sometimes you can't be on the dance floor. All right, all right. Sometimes you got to be like me and just hold up the wall. Y'all right. ain't saying nothing to me. See, see, when I was in school, I, I didn't always get on the dance floor. Y'all can testify about that because I, I have a little slowness in my dancing now when y'all look at me dance. But what I could do, could nobody beat me from holding up the wall. Y'all right. ain't saying nothing to me. But whatever I had in my hand, it belonged to me. But you didn't tell me that whatever I did, I wasn't holding up the wall. See, every night and then, you got to learn to play your part and your position and watch God work it out. Yeah. Paul says, what did he say? Paul says, we, we walk by faith. He says, and what not by right. science. Paul says, some things God has to what? Do. Not only does faith become who we are, but then secondly, watch this in the separation of my call. Faith assures me of my uncertainties. Are y'all in here with me? The assurance what Paul says to those of us who believe is that while it may be uncertain to the natural eye, how this thing going to work out. To the eye of the spirit, you better believe God has already worked it out. Are y'all in here with me? It is the assurance that faith gives to me as a believer that watch this is made evident by not just what I believe, but what I preach. Y'all miss that. Amen. Here it is. It can't just be real because the core your day is preaching it. Amen. It has to be real because the parishioners believe it. Y'all please come a little closer to me here. here Are y'all in here with me? I, I gotta be right because the Bible teaches us. Can I tell you what the Bible teaches us? Watch this. The Bible teaches us faith come by hearing. Yes, sir. I'm trying to preach today. Yes, hearing yes, by the what? Word. word of God. How shall he preach except he be sent? Yes, Can I tell you today? Singing is all right. Can I suggest to you, if you're going to be saved, you got to be saved by the preaching of the word of God. It gives me the assurance of my uncertainties. Now y'all listen to me in here. Like this, what does it do? It assures my, my uncertainties. Why? Because it gives me evidence that, watch this, is not based upon what I believe, but it is based upon what God has identified for my preaching. Here it is. Faith comes again by hearing. Here it comes how? By the what? Word of God. Here it is. The preaching is not just designed to the preacher. Right. But the preaching today is supported by the parishioner. Y'all ain't said nothing to me. Here it is. How do I know I'm able to strengthen faith? Why? Because my preaching starts with faith. 
Are y'all in here with me? Not only does preaching strong, but faith, watch this. Pre fa preaching is strengthened by my faith. Yeah. Are y'all listening to me in here? Preaching sustains my faith. Yeah. But then preaching secures my faith. Here it is, it's not up just to the preacher. Uh -huh. But everywhere you go, you ought to bring a sermon with you. Yeah. At your house, they ought to see a sermon in you. Yeah. On your job, yeah. they ought to see a sermon in you. Right. Wherever you are at the family gathering, they ought to see a sermon in you. So, so what they call you, holy rolling, whatever the case may be, here it is. They ought to be able to see a Christ. Y'all do got Christ, don't you? Y'all, let me see the hands of y'all that got Christ. Then they, they ought to be able to see Jesus Christ on the altar of your own heart. Are y'all in here with me? That's why. That's why I'm grateful for what Paul does in this short one verse. What Paul does is he suggests that yet we as believers must be what? Separated by our calling. But then Paul gives me one more excerpt and I promise you we through for the day. Here it is. Paul says not only must I be spiritual in Christ. Shout that with me, spiritual in Christ. Paul says, number two, I have to be separated by my calling. Shout that with me, separated by my calling. But then Paul closes the text that says, I gotta now stand strong in my conviction. Shout that with me, strength in my conviction. How do I know? Because look at the text. The text says, for we walk by faith. And he says, not by sight. Well, how much then day I be strong in my conviction? Here it is. Whenever you're walking and your eyes are closed, watch this. You got to walk believing that whoever is guiding you will lead you in the right direction. Are y'all saying something to me? And so it is. Just like I do it physically, I got to do it spiritually. In other words, look what he says. Be strong in your conviction. He says every now and then what you got to do is close your eyes. Are y'all in here with me? I, I wish I had some people in the building spiritually that are just close your eyes and, and let the Lord lead you from where you are to where God would have you to be. How do I know? He uses the words not by sight. Can I suggest to you? When you're strong in your conviction, you can close your eyes knowing you can get the victory. I thought everybody would say something back to the preacher. See, when you're strong in your conviction, you, you can close your eyes singing to yourself. Not some things, but everything will be all right. Is there anybody here think, God, I'm strong in my conviction? He just walks us through the text. He just says, faith, again, he says, watch this, we walk by, not, we walk by faith. And he says, not by what? Sight. Sight. When I'm strong in my conviction, here it is. If not what the head can see, right. but rather it's what the body can believe. Amen. Just maybe, and I, and I just say this, just maybe. Just maybe our struggles become evident because we are too busy trying to work them out. Just maybe our struggles become evident because we won't give God his just due. I wish I had some witnesses in here. I might not hoop today, but I'm going to teach y'all today. Just maybe our struggles, here it is, become real because, watch this, we instead of us leaning to God, but the Bible says in here, it says you got to learn to stay strong in your conviction. Right. Are y'all in here with me? What's your conviction? My conviction yeah. is God. He's going to work it out. Yeah. My, my conviction, if I give him what belongs to him, yeah. he'll give me the desires of my heart. I want to ask the question. Can I pull the crowd real quick today? How many of y'all God has blessed you even when you didn't deserve it? How many of y'all God has dropped some sprinkles in your life even when you know you didn't deserve it? That's why I can't sit there like God had done nothing for me. I can't sit there like God had set me free. Here it is. But when I think of the goodness of God and all oh, he's done for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He has done something for you, hasn't he? He has 
had made some ways out of no ways, hadn't he? He had his church of midnights in the middays, hadn't he? He had his covered you when you couldn't cover yourself, hadn't he? He has kept you when you couldn't keep yourself, hadn't he? That's why I gotta put my hands together. I gotta open up my mouth. I gotta say something to the Lord because uh, I gotta stand strong in my yeah. Yeah. It ain't about what my head can see. It's about what my heart can't believe it. Are y'all in here with me? I think I told you several stories before. I'll tell you this one again. We talked about this one with the little red engine that could. Y'all know that story, don't you? He said, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, going up the hill. When other engines would not help and or support him. But here it is. He didn't succumb to what the other engines were saying. The engine, here it is, the little red engine, it says that could because after the little red engine said, I can. Watch this, he said, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. When he gets to the top of the mountain on the way down, he now changes the script and says, I don't think I can. I thought I could, I thought I could. I, I wish I had somebody in here that know that we can do all. I'm grateful because what I can't do, God, is able to do for me. The protection here it is of my faith is never about what is, but the protection of my faith has to be about what is to come. That's why the cross reference of the text says, eyes have not seen, neither ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of man the great things God has in store for them that love the Lord. I just got to ask the question today, is there anybody in the Friendship Church 101, Friendship Street, Hamilton, Georgia, is there anybody love the Lord? Is there anybody strong in your conviction? Is anybody, thank God, it's not about what I can see with my head, but it's about what I can believe in my heart. So what you want me to do, LaCoy, and I'm through. I promise you I'm out of here. It won't be my way of the text. When it says, not by sight. The second thing, the third point says to us is that we have to rely on the spiritual availability rather than rely on human ability. In other words, when God can no longer get things through you, God will stop giving things to you. But can I tell everybody in here, I want to be used by the Almighty God. I want God to have my hands. I want God to have my feet. I want God to have my eyes. I want God to have my voice. I want God to have whatever I have in order to get his word over. Are y'all in here with me? That's what I want to tell you. We're going to make it 2024. Friendship, we got to learn to quit making excuses. We're going to make it 2024. Day, you got to quit talking about you don't have time to study. If you don't make it to 24 members, you got to say, I got to be in Bible class and Sunday school. If we don't make it in 2024, then we both got to say, I'm going to give my tithe and my offering. If we're going to make it in 2024, then we're going to say, we'll let nothing separate us from the love of God. Yeah. And when you learn to do that, right. how many of y'all know God here do what needs to be done? Yeah. I was ahead of people that just turned it over to the Lord and watched them work it out. Y'all will know, y'all do know he will. Let me see y'all hands. How many of y'all know he will? Matter of fact, keep the hands up. How many of y'all know he has? And here it is. How many of y'all know he's able to do it one more time? If he did it yesterday, he'll do it today. And I'm grateful God will do it. Walk by what? Faith. And not by what? Three things that we through faith. Here it is. It's grounded in the hope of your forever. Yes, sir. Faith is resting in the joy of your etern eternity. Mm -hmm. But faith, faith is rooted yeah. in the fact of your God. Yes, sir. What fact is 
to rule it in. That he wrapped himself in himself. That he pulled himself out of himself. That he brought himself through 40 and two generations. That he was born of a virgin. Baptized in the Jordan. Can I tell you what it is? He healed the sick.
don't put off the day for tomorrow, for tomorrow is not promised. So the Bible says, the day you get my voice, hard not your heart. Come by letter by Christian experience. Or come as a candidate for water baptism. If you're here today, the altar are extended, the doors to God's church is now made available. For the doors to the church have always been open. If you're here today, we open the door to you. Will you come? 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 Y'all go and 
peace.